So I'm back in my home office after yesterday's Apple event excitement where we saw two new Apple Silicon chips, the M1 Pro and the M1 Max. Except there aren't two, there's five. So let's take a look. So whilst we've got the M1 Pro and the M1 Max, there's actually three different versions of the M1 Pro and two different versions of the M1 Max that are available. And two of those M1 Pros are only available in the 14 inch version of the MacBook Pro. Uh, let's get a chart up so that we can uh, make sense of all of this. So here we have the entry level chip, and this is clearly a binned version of the M1 Pro that Apple announced. Now the main M1 Pro we know is gonna have 10 CPU cores and 16 GPU cores. Uh, but here we're losing two of those GPU cores and we can have it either as an eight core CPU or a 10 core CPU. Now this particular chip is only available on the 14 inch MacBook Pro. Uh, and this has probably been done so that Apple can advertise a lower starting price for this laptop. Each of these chips can be configured with either 16 gigs of RAM or 32 gigabytes of RAM. The starting point for the SSD, by the way, is 512 gigabytes. Uh, and that's both for the 14 inch and the 16 inch, no matter which of the CPU options you choose. If we're only getting an eight core CPU, isn't that just the same as the M1? Because that has an eight core CPU as well. Uh, and that's true, but uh, with this particular architecture, which is of course based on ARM architecture, you have both performance cores and power efficient cores. Uh, now the M1 chip has four of each. Uh, this new chip has uh, eight of the performance cores and two of the efficiency cores. So to get an eight core CPU, what we're doing is losing two of those performance cores. So we end up with six performance cores and two efficiency cores. Uh, so that means that you're getting two extra performance cores compared to the standard M1. Uh, something else as well is that we're getting 200 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth, and that's something like three times faster than the M1. So it'd be reasonable to assume that this chip is going to outperform the M1. Uh, we'll need to wait and see what the benchmarks are like, but it wouldn't surprise me if we see maybe a 25% uplift in multi-threaded performance. A single core performance, well, there might be a small uplift thanks to that memory bandwidth, but I don't think it'll be night and day. Of course, you can spec the chip with the full 10 cores. So you're getting the eight performance cores and the two efficiency cores. And this could be anything up to 50% improved. Again, we need to wait and see what the benchmarks are like. And it may not be directly comparable with the M1 due to the different balance of the cores and also that memory bandwidth. I'm sure there are things where the new chips are gonna be much faster and there'll be other disciplines where the margin of difference is not so great. Whatever number of CPU cores you go for on this particular chip, you're losing two GPU cores. Uh, but it still means that you're getting an extra six GPU cores as compared to the M1. And again, we've got that increased memory bandwidth and you can spec it up to 32 gigabytes. So that should be quite a considerable jump in graphics performance. Uh, so those are our first two options. Let's go on to the third option. This is the M1 Pro that Apple announced. So we're getting the 10 cores. We're getting the 16 core GPU. Again, we can spec it with 16 or 32 gigabytes of RAM. And of course, we're getting that 200 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth. And this chip is what you would get in the entry level 16 inch MacBook Pro, but of course you can also spec it on the 14 inch as well. And next we've got the M1 Max chip. And again, there is also a binned version of this. So uh, let's start with that one. So this again gives you that same 10 core CPU that you get in the M1 Pro. Now we're getting double the memory bandwidth. We're up to 400 gigabytes a second. And in some applications, that is going to make a difference to performance. Again, we'll need to wait until we can test these things properly to see what that difference is, but uh, it could be interesting. With the M1 Max, the entry level RAM is 32 gigabytes, but you can also spec it up to 64 gigabytes. And this will be music to the ears of many professionals who've been desperate for more memory. The difference between these two M1 Max chips is that the binned version is getting 24 GPU cores, uh, whereas the full fat version gets 32 GPU cores. Uh, that's gonna make for a fairly substantial difference in GPU performance. That doesn't mean that the 24 core GPU is gonna be a slouch by any standards. Uh, previously, the fastest GPU that you could spec in the MacBook Pro range was the Radeon 5600M. And it should be the case that actually that the 16 core GPU on the M1 Pro is broadly equivalent to that. And these 24 core and 32 core GPUs should be taking the performance on to a whole new level, uh, particularly with access to all of that RAM. Remember, when you're buying Apple Silicon chips, the memory is shared between the CPU and the GPU, and indeed all of the other cores that are on the system. This makes for incredibly efficient and fast performance. 
and it means that your GPU can access a huge amount of RAM, an unprecedented amount in fact for a laptop. One of the great things about this new range of MacBook Pros is that you can have that top spec CPU in a 14 inch chassis if that's what you prefer. Uh, I think that's amazing and it's what we really hoped for from Apple Silicon. And this is all down to the incredible performance per watt. These chips are running at low wattage compared to their PC counterparts and that means that you don't need as much cooling so we can get that top level performance into a smaller chassis. Uh, hopefully you found this little rundown useful to you if you're thinking of buying one of these machines and trying to make sense of uh, what all of these options are that Apple never spoke about at the event. I'm really looking forward to running some benchmarks on these new machines and also doing some real world testing. Uh, we've got a couple of different specs on order, both the M1 Pro and the M1 Max. Uh, so once those arrive, we'll be giving them a proper shakedown. If there's anything that you'd like to see, please let us know in the comments section below. Uh, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, well, you know what to do. And uh, thanks in advance for all of those subs, uh, your likes and your shares. Really appreciate it. it helps the channel so much. Uh, so thanks very much, and we'll see you again soon for some more geekery.